This is a small tutorial on um, Substance Designer's IRA Renderer. I was playing around with it. Um, I installed uh, another graphics card to my workstation, this old GTX card, this uh, basically gaming card. And now I have two GPUs in my uh, rig, which I find to be super awesome for IRA rendering. Um, I was able to do this um, product shot of this uh, lovely piece of uh, Alvar Aldo's fin Finnish uh, votive uh, collection thing and I modeled this guy uh, a couple of years back for for some project and then I got this model lying around and I was thinking that what could I get out of it if I will uh, throw this guy to iRay and try to render it like using the new uh, new, new style of uh, because I, I did some renders with this within Lightwave uh, back in the day, but um, I wanted to kind of uh, see what we can do and, and it turned out pretty well. Uh, it's a pretty clean render um, and what was really cool about this when I saved this PSD out of uh, uh, Substance Designers viewboard, I found out something really cool. Look at this. This is actually a transparency what we have happening here. So uh, what 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 this actually what it actually did it saved our transparency channel here. So if you go go back in here, we can see that actually we get this. So uh, so I mean I was I, I was thinking that it's gonna be just like just like a still render what we would get, and I I, I wouldn't expect that that they went as as far as uh, implement that into the render. So so let's take a look uh, how to let render uh, this type of a thing in. Um, in, in Substance Designer. So um, I suppose we're just gonna uh, import, we have to make new Substance I suppose. This stuff doesn't really matter because we're not gonna use any of the nodes uh, for this, so we're just gonna use the iRay. So uh, I'm gonna go here and I'm going to, um, just a moment, uh, we have to link uh, 3D Mesh and uh, we have this FBX here and um, we are just gonna go to 3D view and we are gonna drop, drag and drop the sky in here. So um, now what what we have in um, in uh, Substance Design now is that we have support for multi-layered uh, FBX files. So so if we go into the scene, we can see we have two meshes here and we can uh, enable or disable them, whatever we need. So we we are gonna be able to use backgrounds such as these and we can even independently assign different materials to to them so this is really cool cool new function um, we're just gonna put it put this guy here and and then um, we can actually just try to see what the IRA is gonna do for us it's gonna do us like this what, what we would expect so obviously this doesn't look like a doesn't look like a glass well, it actually kind of looks like that what's is this the ref reflection or what is it Maybe it has some settings there. Well, what what were left from behind? So let's basically go and uh, uh, re reset all, uh, reset everything. Um, first thing, if you're going to do glass or anything complicated, uh, it's important to go to materials and and reset the material first. So um, here in the materials, we can see two materials. One is for the for the other object, for the for the background, um, for the backdrop, and one is for this glass object. So, so different. Uh, if you have different mesh layers, the mesh layers is going to appear here as different different materials. So here you can assign different materials to them. So, um, so okay. Here is a nice start. And um, before we actually get started, we can actually drop this these guys to one, so we get the f best performance out of this. So let's go to glass. Um, let's go to definitions and select metallic roughness here, and then uh, go to edit and see what we can actually do here. So um, we have a bunch of guys here now uh, because we reset the material. We are not going to use any of the node stuff. So because if you are going to use these uh, in my test, at least I couldn't get the refraction work probably because it doesn't support. Uh, material inputs from uh, the graph so so these guys need to be reset in, ob in order to be able to use these sliders here so uh, so that's just a word of, word of warning um, first uh, Doshuk, well let's do like um, we can actually start by hitting refraction uh, so we're gonna use refraction one here 
and um, so the what the refraction settings are here is that the refraction is actually this isn't refraction index actually this is re index of refraction IOR so uh, the glass is 1.5 uh, uh, refraction index so so this uh, one over five uh, it's uh, approximately uh, of course the, the thickness and those things might actually uh, affect it so it might not be automatically that okay glass is 1.5 so it to be you might have to experiment in order to get it uh, right but but more or less uh, I've found out that um, this kind of a thing would work roughness uh, should be absolutely zero in order to be able to make proper looking glass otherwise it, it won't work so we are kind of starting to look like a glass in here now I wonder how this yeah it actually looks like a glass already so already we are kind of getting uh, getting somewhere here let's let it be a while while um, uh, it should or oh, maybe we should uh, increase the samples just about this little bit to keep it to get more so yeah you can see and look, look how fast it's so fast it's just a uh, I just uh, I'm so big fan of this uh, this thing I've been using uh, CPU renders and I've been doing things like this using uh, using you know uh, CPU so it's a for me it's a uh, such a big joy to, to see something coming up uh, this fast and and uh, yeah so here we are. So uh, this actually this body, this guy was uh, is actually red. So we're gonna be able to change this to uh, the proper color. I think we maybe need to use this diffuse color to be able to be able to to look like uh, the body is actually um, it's actually pretty nice. Uh, is I'm a big fan of this object. This uh, Alvar Aalto's uh, one of the maybe one of the more like famous designs. Um, Specular level, um, I'm wondering about this. What it is very specular. It, the, the glass itself is uh, super specular. So I'm gonna maybe try um, try this specular level one here. Uh, what else? So it's not a bad start uh, anyway. Um, this is more or less uh, more or less a nice. Um, uh, I'm gonna maybe leave it around here. Um, so we we maybe actually need to maybe put just a little bit of absorb absorption, maybe like something like this. I found to be to be right one. So now, um, as you can see uh, in our render, we get we get this real nice uh, looking um, um, sort of effect here. Um, we 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 can we used one of the studio uh, backdrops, so we can go. Um, and select uh, some of the backdrops in here. Um, I could actually we could to drop this studio in here and see how this is gonna do for us. Okay, this looks actually pretty um, looks actually pretty good. So now we have new options. Also, if we go to uh, environment here, we can actually use a sphere with ground. And what this does is that it gives us. Um, basically ground object and this ground object can actually catch uh, caustics or shadows um, we have actually caustic sample enabled here so we might be able to uh, get this render and visualize we can actually visualize the ground you can actually uh, enable it um, let's see so now we are getting some uh, reflectivity in here um, and, and as you can see uh, it sort of uh, starts to look pretty good you can actually um, go with this we maybe have to um, increase this exposure to give it more uh, more power um, something like this might actually work and as you can see it, it works um, it works really fast and, um, and I was just letting it sit for like 10 minutes I was able to get pretty green result and and if there, there was a little bit of a, a 
noise left, but I was able to use the just the Photoshop's the reduce noise function to get rid of the uh, little bit of noise which was left. But I mean, it's it, it, I mean it's amazing. I mean, when you think about this, we're going to be able to um, we're going to be able to get this result this fast without uh, without doing almost anything at all. It's um, and the great thing about this is that actually um, the Substance Designer has become a really viable render tool if you think that that um, even if you're not doing anything like texture based or if you're not doing any textures at all uh, you're going to be able to use this to if you just uh, maybe make, some, make something with Lightwave and then just save it as uh, multi-layer FBX file and import it here you, you've got everything set up you can just start to render and I mean that if you think about the value it's a huge value it's cost like $140 now and with that you get the huge uh, procedural uh, package and you also get uh, really uh, a proper uh, rendering uh, solution so so it's uh, you can't do any anima animation and uh, the way how you can set up lights is um, is a fairly limited but um, but you you're still getting um, basically a render studio and you can use AGRI um, images to to do your lighting so i don't know if there's much to be desired uh it, it's it's working really well and 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 now we can actually see and we can do all the all this as i showed you in the earlier video uh we can do all the post processing stuff like a uh, post effects um a glare um i noticed that glare by the way we have a really nice looking uh, other options like we have a uh, lens flare, uh, we have a cheap lens. <laughs> I'm loving this stuff. It's uh, after image uh, filled across, and what's really cool about this also it uh, does this really. Uh, it kind of does this independently from the rendering. So, so now we are we are still I suppose we are still rendering. Are we? I know we are not. Uh, we left. We're gonna put this. Let's increase this guys and see where we can get so anyway as i mentioned um so now it's while it's still doing the render on the background uh, we are going to be able to uh, change these and and this is sort of just put on top of the thing so uh this shouldn't affect uh the actually the uh render process itself uh, so it's very it's very cleverly implemented implemented things so uh, as you can see we are now rendering um, and if we increase or decrease it shouldn't uh, it shouldn't affect the process anyway so so yeah um, basically this is it uh, you're gonna be able to get the real nice looking um, result out of uh, out of this and and we can maybe go and uh, just uh, play around a little bit with the, with the ground um, and with the dome, uh, you can actually um, uh, move, kind of rotate the, rotate the. Just, so this means that it's kind of rotating the stadio around. So you can kind of move around and see if you can find something really nice, something that looks good. It's it's good a good idea to to try one of the studio um, um, back uh, environments. Um, I actually like this one, this is really good. Um, you can try those and um, you can also set uh, different things uh, such as uh, uh, yeah, the uh, infinite sphere um, looks something like this. Um, uh, we have a ground, uh, we have sphere, uh, <laughs> what is this? It's weird. Where are, the, where are the colors coming from? Why there are some colors? Mm. Well, uh, I wouldn't know. It's weird. Uh, it should be... I mean, it's not the... You can see, it's, it's not very... Where are the colors coming from? Oh. Mm. Sphere, why is it... The, why are these... Ah, yeah, I see the, the colors are probably coming from uh, 
Are they coming from the post processing? Oh, they are not coming from the post processing. Uh, well, um, if anyone knows why this appears colorful, do please let me know. Uh, I would love to know that. So yeah, the sphere, and we have a box with ground. Uh, we have a yeah, the sphere with ground, which we are, which we are using. Um, we are able to also hide the ground if we want, and we have a, able to set glossiness and things like that for the ground. We might actually wanna um, play around with this a little bit. So the ground is ca catching the caustics uh, from from the glass, which is kind of actually what we want it to do. Um, we call it super glossy. What's gonna happen? Oh well, this is interesting. So this is glossiness. Mm, kind of wondering uh, what would look the best. So let's see. Mm. So maybe increase a little bit um, something uh, along these lines might work. So yeah, this is primarily it. Um, there is the, the multi sampling thing. Um, uh, we can go uh, in the in the camera and uh, when we go here uh, we have multi sample and um, I have it enabled at the moment multi mode um, I was unable to find any documentation whatsoever from these multi sample things uh, uh, I will come back to this later definitely when I able to find something uh, um, I think this uh, if we are able to use these properly, it this might um, give us a, some real nice uh, result. Uh, there, there was a bit of a noise left, which uh, which I was able to get rid of in Photoshop. But uh, uh, if this multi sample works nicely, um, I hope it does. It would be cool to so that we can get the ready renders out from uh, out from Substance Designer. But uh, this is basically what I was able to do, and I'm loving this. It's um, it's great things. Uh, I was able. I went to the camera settings, and uh, of course, um, you're doing product shots, so um, it's a good idea to to increase the focal length um, of the lens because you know the product shots are normally done uh, with a with a pretty high, uh, like a higher focal lengths, uh, uh, so that you know the proportions and everything looks better, I suppose, um, in the render. So, so yes. Well, um, this is it. So um, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on uh, how to render a glass and things like that in iRay render. So. Uh, I hope to see you soon. Uh, thank you very much.